40 days ago, we celebrated the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now we recall the day on which he was presented in the temple, when he was offered to the Father and shown to his people. In their old age, Simeon and Anna recognised him as their Lord, as we today sing of his glory. Today we celebrate both the joy of his coming and his searching judgment, looking back to the day of his birth and forward to the coming days of his passion. Together we say the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, light of the nations and glory of Israel, make your home among us and present us pure and holy to your heavenly Father, your God and our God. Amen. Our first reading is taken from Malachi, chapter 3, verses 1 to 5. See, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant in whom you delight, indeed, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming? And who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. And he will purify the descendants of Levi and refine them like gold and silver until they present offerings to the Lord in righteousness. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord as in the days of old, as in former years. Then I will draw near to you for judgment. I will be swift to bear witness against the sorcerers, against the adulterers, against those who swear falsely, against those who oppress the hired workers in their wages, the widow and the orphan, against those who thrust aside the alien. And do not fear me, says the Lord of hosts.
When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord, Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple and when the parents brought in the child Jesus, child, Jesus to do for him was what customary under the law. Simeon took him in his arms and praised God saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servants in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples a light of revelation to the Gentiles, and for the glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the failing and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet Anna, the daughter of Phenuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was of great age, having lived with her husband for seven years after her marriage. Then as a widow of the age of 84, she never left the temple, but worshipped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment, she came and began to praise God, and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Israel, Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by the Lord of the Lord, they returned to G Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favour of God was upon him. When families bring a newborn baby to church for baptism, it is a joyful occasion. Parents, family, friends join with the church family to celebrate baby's arrival and give thanks to God for the new member of the family. Photos are taken to commemorate the day and there is usually a party to follow. The presentation of Jesus at the Temple of Jerusalem is not a baptism. And so we should be careful of making too many connections with our Christian rite of initiation. Mary and Joseph took Jesus to the temple to perform two particular rites which the Torah, the Jewish book of the law, commanded parents to do. The first was a rite for Mary as a new mother. In Jewish law, she was required to undergo ritual purification after childbirth. It sounds odd to our 21st century ears, but it behoves us to remember that we had our own ritual of the churching of women in our country, which continued throughout most of the 20th century. Your mother may even have experienced it herself. The second reason Mary and Joseph took Jesus to the temple was for the baby's own right of initiation, the redemption of the firstborn son. Again, this was a commandment in Jewish law, because traditionally, the firstborn son was to be dedicated to God to serve as a priest. The redemption of the son was a way of forfeiting this priestly status by giving five silver coins to the temple. There is much more to it, of course, and you can find out much more about the ceremony online if you are interested. For our reflection on Candlemas, 
It's enough to know why Jesus was presented in the temple and to know that, like a baptism, this is both a ceremony and a celebration. And like with many baptisms, Jewish families today, they still normally follow the ceremony with a festive meal. So Mary and Joseph took Jesus to the temple in anticipation of a ritual ceremony, which would doubtless be a time of celebration and thanksgiving. But their presentation of Christ would turn out to be very different. At this point, let me invite you to consider this painting of the presentation by Bellini. What strikes you about it? You might notice that no one is smiling. The expressions on people's faces are thoughtful, maybe even sorrowful. Joseph in the centre looks almost angry as he stares at Simeon. What impact have Simeon's words had on him? And Mary, Blessed Mary is surely pondering those words, a sword will pierce your own soul too. As for Christ himself, he is wrapped in swaddling clothes, just as he was when Mary laid him in the manger. Except they look like a different sort of clothing. They look like the bands of cloth that will, thirty odd years later, be wrapped around Jesus' lifeless body before he's laid in the tomb. Candlemas is the pivot between Christmas and Easter. This painting of Bellini's dramatically emphasises that truth. The baby who was laid in the manger will grow up to be laid in the tomb. God born as one of us will become God dying for all of us. The mother who endured the pains of childbirth will endure the pain of seeing her son crucified. There is joy to come. Both Simeon and Anna testify to that. Salvation, glory, redemption, revelation, so much to look forward to. And not only for the people of Israel, but for the Gentiles too. But the road to get there will be hard. It will be like the experience of David when he spoke in that well-known psalm of walking through the valley of the shadow of death. Once again, the biblical story mirrors much of our own current situation as we draw close to a full year since the first lockdown. It has been a year where the world has walked through the valley of the shadow of death. Let us remember how that psalm continues. There is the promise that we are not alone in the valley. God is with us. The God who came at Christmas, the God who takes our place on the cross. And at the end of the valley, a feast is ready and waiting. Our heads will be anointed. Our cups will overflow with joy. Candlemas reminds us that the world is full of both light and darkness, of joy and sorrow. Ultimately, light will triumph. The light of the world shines in the darkness and the darkness will not overcome it. May we, with Mary, carry the light of Christ through this valley, know that God travels with us, and the end of the valley is in sight. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith, 
and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. So let us pray. Let us pray to the Father through Christ, who is our light and life. Father, your Christ is acclaimed as the glory of Israel. Look in mercy on your church, sharing his light. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Father, your Christ in his temple brings judgment on the world. Look in mercy on the nations who long for his justice. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Father, your Christ, who was rich, for our sakes became poor. Look in mercy on the needy, suffering with him. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Father, your servant is the one in whom faithful servants find their peace. Look in mercy on the departed, that they may see your salvation. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Father, your Christ is revealed as the one destined to be rejected. Look in mercy on us who now turn towards his passion. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord God, you kept faith with Simeon and Anna and showed them the infant king. Give us grace to put all our trust in your promises and the patience to wait for their fulfilment. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Believing the promises of God, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Candlemas Prayer Lord God, the springing source of everlasting light, pour into the hearts of your faithful people the brilliance of your eternal splendour, that we, by these kindling flames, may have the darkness of our souls dispelled, and so be counted worthy to stand before you in that eternal city where you live and reign, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. The Nunc Dimittis A light to lighten the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Now, Lord, you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. A light to lighten the nations and the glory of your people Israel. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people. A light to lighten the nations and the glory of your people, Israel. A light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people, Israel. 
a light to lighten the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. A light to lighten the nations and the glory of your people Israel. today. Praise to Christ our light. We have shared in the joy of Simeon and Anna. Help us like them to trust your word. Praise to Christ our light. We have greeted Jesus, the light of the world. May we be filled with the light of your love. Praise to Christ our light. Christ, the Son of God, perfect in you the image of his glory and gladden your hearts with the good news of his kingdom and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. We recall the font, the place of new birth, let us shine with the light of your love. Our thoughts turn from the crib to the cross. Let us shine with the light of your love. 
We carry his light. Let us shine with the light of your love. Thanks be to God.